the Republicans are cheating for another election. Um, yeah, so 2024 is coming up, and just like clockwork, the Republicans are just trying to, you know, rig a bunch of things so that way they just have the best outcome with doing the least amount of effort. Why would I even want to be a Republican? Not like they would want me to be in their party, just saying. But why on earth would I want to be a Republican? Not only does it seem like the majority of their interests are kind of completely against mine, but also they're just it, they just seem lame. Whenever I see something like this and it, it's something that's so important, something that should be so respected, but when I see a bunch of clowns just running around trying to change rules just so that they can stay in power, you, you're lame. You there's no other word that's really better than that. It's just fucking lame. Because you don't have good ideas. If you had good ideas, you might win. You can rig an election and the Democrat might still win. <laughs> what the f*** does that tell you? Um, go out and get some new ideas. Ones that might be better than the ones that you have right now. Because apparently the majority of people just don't want you. Not to say that the Democrats are all that better, but it's like you're the party that kind of messes things up when the Democrats are the party that can't fix it. You know what I mean? Like they want to, but they kind of can't. And you're the party that's like, let's just f*** it up. Anyway, uh, we got uh, Republicans move to exert uh, new control over election oversight ahead of 2024. Uh, I'm just going to read through it. Uh, Republicans who control the North Carolina legislature are moving to change the makeup of the state and county election boards and sideline the state's Democratic governor, Roy Cooper. Ooh, look at that. But the article doesn't start there. It starts in Texas with Greg Abbott signed a new law that allows a state official appointed by him to take over election operations in Harris County, like, like just Harris County. The state's largest Democratic stronghold, the, the place that gives, you know, Abbott, you know, nightmares at night and headaches in the morning. But um, the rules are very particular. There's stuff going on in Georgia. There's stuff going on in Wisconsin. Same thing with elections, uh, the people that oversee them. But um, let's go ahead and get to North Carolina. Uh, the Republicans there have a supermajority because people don't vote in lower elections. So if more people vote in lower elections, the Republicans in North Carolina might not have a supermajority. So for some of the people there that vote for the governor or the president, but they don't vote for anything under that, it's kind of on you. Now they got all these people. And now what they can do, the safeguard whenever you have a Democratic governor is the governor can override like the legislature, right? Like if there's some crazy bill, like, you know, in a state where they're passing some you know, crazy abortion laws or whatever, you know, the governor, oftentimes a Democrat, can step in and be like, no, you have to let people just do what they're allowed to do, like under the Constitution. Like there's no reason why you should interfere with a person's health and their body and stuff like that. But that's normally the catch. But if Republicans have a supermajority, guess what? They can veto the governor. They can overrule the governor. Hmm. Um, North Carolina is a beautiful state, but I don't, I don't know if I can live there. I just, I just can't. So that's kind of a taste of what's going on there. I would say, um, oh, Cooper, guy in the picture right in the middle there. What he's talking about is that it's a power grab. He's trying to put the word out there. But he put it out there in a Twitter post. So my question for Governor Cooper, is there anything that's planned to try and help resolve this? To try to make things a little bit better in that state? I don't know. I don't know. Getting back to Texas, uh, two nearly enacted laws targeting the elections process in Harris County specifically um, have angered Democrats and voting rights activists uh, who basically accused the GOP there of a power grab also. And... So one of the measures eliminates the position of election administrator in a county with a population of more than 3.5 million people. And there's only one county in Texas that it actually meets that criteria. That's Harris County. It's controlled by Democrats. 
in that one county in all of Texas, the biggest Democratic stronghold is singled out by this bill. Now, they always frame it like this, where they're like, no, 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 no. It's just counties that, you know, are over 3.5 million. And you ask them, how many counties do you have? And they say a bunch. Uh, How many are over 3.5 million? You go one. (laughs) Duh, it sounds like you're singling people out. But another law goes even further. SB 1933 authorizes the Texas Secretary of State, an appointee of the Republican Governor Abbott, to order administrative oversight of a county's elections office if, for instance, a complaint is filed or there is uh, or there's cause to believe there is a reoccurring pattern of problems involving election administration or voter registration. The new law affects any county that has a population of more than 4 million people, which again only applies to one county, Harris County. You're just lame, Republicans. Hang on, hang on to the little bit of power now, right? Because you're worried that the state is growing too blue for you. Well, guess what? It, it, it will probably keep going. I don't even know why there are people like this, <laughs> like human beings, people that just can't take you know any type of competition. I like people that love competition, people that thrive on testing themselves to see if they can actually be you know, the best or number one or whatever, or the winner, who, who knows, whatever the thing is. But that is honorable. This is just... So I guess my parting words, um, definitely don't just vote in the presidential election and the gubernatorial election for the governor. Vote in all of the elections, all of the, the lower houses, all of the Senate races, everything. Just vote down to the local school board. Just vote for all of it. Because even if you vote for the president and governor that you want, the people underneath them can overrule that person if there are enough of the opposition. So just just think about these things. You have to get more involved. I know people want to turn a blind eye to this, but uh, the Republicans are cheating ahead of 2024.